Hey guys, let's get right to it here. Last night's service, as soon as I heard Devin Shire give his scripture, I knew where it was going. I knew it. Right away, my mind flashed back to 2003, 2004, after Dennis broke off from NTCC. And don't worry if you're not familiar with that. We're going to be covering that very soon here. I'm compiling, doing some research, capturing websites, talking to people who were involved in all that. But aside from that, this is exactly what happened. Now, mind you, they don't, they don't, they conveniently leave out what are all the details of Davis breaking off from his original <laughs> organization? I kind of leave that stuff out, don't they? This is so reminiscent of, two, we'll say 2004 especially. We were hearing all the time about being loyal and standing with Pastor Davis. And that's when Jordan got up and preached about Davis being an apostle like one of the 12 and one of the four and 20 elders from the book of Revelation. And that's when uh, at conferences, that's what you were hearing. Company men, company men being loyal to the corporation. Keckel was saying at the time, because everybody was looking at everybody all side eye, you know, like askance. Like, what, what's up with that person? Is that person with us or are they against us? And they're doing the same thing now. They want to isolate. They want to uh, fill your mind and indoctrinate it with the idea that anybody that's shaken, like from this service, or uh, like Keckel preached last week about he's likening himself to Moses, to, to the people grumbling against Moses he likened himself. He likened the organization. People talking about things. You're not allowed without permission. So back in 2004, everybody was looking at everyone. And somebody asked Keckle, how do we know who's an enemy? What is this enemy stuff? They're back in the Old Testament. And he said, anyone who's left is an enemy. So it doesn't matter if somebody just realized, I don't want to be a part of a cult. I don't want to be a part of this doctrine that they're teaching. I don't want to be a part of people that try to put division between others. Good brethren, putting division between them. It's evil. It's so evil. And Devonshire getting up, I, you would have a hard time convincing me that he wasn't briefed and prepped a little bit about what's going on in the church there. You, you can't even convince me. We know that there's stuff going on because of the way Keckle is preaching. When you're in, you don't fully see it. I'm sure within people, you're feeling that agitation, like something's not right. It's not, it's not because of the people that are having their eyes opened. It's because you are a fierce loyalist and it's being disrupted by the people that you think you're supposed to be loyal to. None of this is biblical. None of this loyalty and church lines and all of this. The church is universal. It's, it's anyone who's a Christian. Not by NTCC standards. By the Bible. That's what they believe. That's what you have to go by. And when, when Kinson said last night about standing with the church, he means their corporation, NTCC. He doesn't mean the universal church, as in the Bible. And stand with pastor. This is right from 2004, 20 years ago. 20, maybe even almost to the day. <laughs> Who knows? But that's what we kept hearing. Everybody was agitated against everyone else. And they were pitting parents against children and friends against friends. It's, it's such wickedness. And I want you to open up your eyes and see it. The way a pastor should be is caring and loving and planting seeds of unconditional love and care and concern. There's no danger brought upon your soul if um, 
people in the group waking up and leave? How is that dangerous to your soul? How does that hurt you? How does that harm you? How? Because you realize maybe that these are a bunch of phony balonies, posers, who just need your money to pay their building tax. That's all it is. That's all it's ever been. Because if it wasn't that way, they would be speaking in loving terms, in tenderness, in unification of the brethren, not division. It's always division. It's always some enemy fighting, fighting, fighting. They're always fighting somebody, something. Always have their swords drawn. And it's because they have no faith. They cannot rest. They don't believe in God. You know how many cults there are that draw people in with the words from the Bible, the very Bible that people sitting in NTCC right now listen to? They use enough of it to introduce something, and then they go on to tell you how to think. And everything is based around some current event. And go listen to the latest messages. It's about, there's one service where Keckle spent the whole time basically preaching to one person. And you know how I know? Because he's done it before. Because Davis used to do it. It's easy to recognize when somebody's standing up there. Is that what people come to church for? Is that why you came? To hear that mess? Drama? A spectacle? A show? He thinks he's being tough. Got to do that. Got to see who will stand. No. Okay. So um, I'm going to beat you up. I'll see how tough you are if you, if you still keep coming around me for more. He dragged out this past couple weeks that tired old playbook of oh, running it like a boot camp. Where in the world does it say anything about that? Why do you accept that? I remember somebody bragging about that that came over to pastor in the Philippines when I was stationed there. Like, we, we made it through the Bible school. It's like a boot camp. It's hard. It's tough. You're going to be put to the test. But we made it. That is not what it's about. And then you know what happens? All those little soldiers go out and treat people in their churches the same way because they can't distinguish. Not everyone but a lot, a lot. Is that what you're going to do when you leave the Bible school? If you ever leave there, are you going to go out and wreak havoc on people's lives in the name of the gospel? But to think that you have to accept this because you think you are really something, you're God's elite special forces, as Olson had told us, semester after semester. And so... You're happy to do that, even though you see your friends and loved ones being kicked to the curb and being treated like garbage in the name of the gospel that you say you believe in. Are you going to go out and do ye likewise? It's sinful. Tracy, you sound upset. I am, quite frankly. I couldn't sleep last night. I kept thinking of these people not only through the years, all the ones that were lied about. Dirty dog liars. Davis, Olson, Kinson, Keckle. Liars. They lied about people who left. Lied, 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 lied. Because it didn't serve their purpose anymore. Once they cannot manipulate you, you are worthless to them. Worthless. But once they realize you cannot be manipulated and you maybe dare to speak up and reveal your heart to others, oh, they will, your good friends will tattletale on you. They think they're doing God a service, really. That's, that's what it is. It's not, I don't believe it's evil intention. I believe they think they're doing something to help the man of God self-professed when someone has no proof of that in their life that they are a man of God then 
Does a man of God go away for two weeks and come back and ride everyone that doesn't that dares to go do something else other than be there every single service? He missed. Why can he miss it? Why? Ask yourself why. You know you want to ask yourself that. That is not godliness. It's so sad that we ever thought that is godliness. Why is that? Is that a pastor? Is that a pastor's heart? Is that is that what's going to draw people to Christ or to a group of believers meeting in a place? How can that ever Ever, ever, ever. Most of us want to escape and flee from people that are so divisive. They divide. They divide to serve their own purposes that cause such problems. And when you do it in the name of God, of Christ, of the Bible, you have to look at, you have to follow the money, <laughs> really. You have to follow the money. Years ago, all of us, of course, we didn't, we weren't allowed to have TV. We listened to the radio. We listened to Rush Limbaugh. And he always said, follow the money. You want to know what's up with something? Follow the money. Follow the money here as best you can because they're not transparent at all. They would be preaching the gospel in a way that would yield the results that you read about in your Bibles. There's a way to proof if the person is who they say they are. There are proofs. Check it out. Read it for yourself. Don't be spoon fed everything by these people. And that's what they're trying to do to you. As of things that are made that those things which cannot be shaken may remain. We are troubled on every side, yet not distressed. We are perplexed, but not in despair. And this word yet once more signifieth the, rem the removing of those things that are shaken as of things that are made, that those things which cannot be shaken may remain. I want to preach to you with God's help and your help on a message entitled Unshakable. Unshakable. Let us pray. It's unsettling to have the things that you normally count on as stable begin to move. Even more so when it comes to spiritual things. Beliefs, ideas, friends. Methods. Amen. Hallelujah. What's trying to shake you? What do you need to shake off and to come to this altar tonight? God wants you to be solid as the rock Christ Jesus. What's attacking you? What's trying to shake you? What form of friendship? What, what, what type of brotherhood or whatever that's in your life? What form of friendship? What, what, what type of brotherhood or whatever that's in your life that's trying to tear you down? What exactly does tear you down mean? Is there somebody in a former brotherhood capacity that's tearing you down? What does that mean? These are just words. These are just trigger words. These are just indoctrination words. You're not supposed to think about it. You're not supposed to, to, to um, consider it, ponder it, ruminate over it. You're just supposed to embrace it and hug it and believe it and absorb it. And don't think. Leave the thinking to your pastors. Look to heaven and realize where your true loyalties really are. Here we go. This is going to be a recurring theme. It's probably going to be in your classes and everything. 
everything. Conversations, loyalty, loyalty, loyalty. Where is your loyalty, loyalty? Is it with the man of God? Look to heaven and just go ahead and say, I'm going to stand with God. I've got to stand with my church. I've got to stand with my pastor. I'm going to stand for the things that Jesus put into my soul. Oh, brother. Oh, brother. Damage Control 101 NTCC style, y'all. There should be a looking to and a speaking of people in a tender, loving, uplifting way. And that is not what you get here. You don't get it. You don't look to be uplifted. You won't be because you never do anything right. You're always in need of salvation. You're always in need of being fixed and set astraight. They're, they have to make you think that. Otherwise, why... Do you feel the need to come every single time they open the doors? They need your money. They need you to feel like you're a part of something that's really making a difference. And yet, were you to look around, you'd say, where is the difference being made exactly? Not really sure. Well, have an awesome, awesome Thursday, and I'll see you later.